upload this onto IGTV and also our YouTube channel for um, Evergreen Muse. So okay. we're officially recording. Um, hi guys, I'm Samara Rivers, founder of Black Bourbon Society, and this is uh, Weekly Weekly, um, Weekly Weekly, this is Whiskey Weekly. Um, today our, uh, our guests are a part of Majesty Bourbon. It's a local um, uh, Georgia-based bourbon company, Black-owned. We have the founder, LaRue Livingston, um, or John Gillard, is that right? Yes, that's correct. John is the founder. We've got Monier Shell, who is the COO of Majesty, and LaRue Livingston, who is the VP of Marketing. So three dope, amazing brothers out of Georgia who are, have created this whiskey that we're going to talk about today. Um, we've got our members online, we've got our members on Zoom, and yeah, let's just dive right into our discussion. So um, let's start with the owner, let's start with John. Tell us the concept around, around Majesty Bourbon. Okay, the concept. Um, one day, like honestly, it just came to me like out of the blue. Um, Previous to this project, um, we had a beer um, that went on the market and it pretty much was really successful, um, really fast. So then I hit up Manye and I was like, hey, um, Manye, um, I think I want to do a liquor. And Manye was like, are you sure? I'm like, yes. So he was just like, well, do you want to think about it? I was like, yeah, you know, um, I'll think about it. But deep down in my mind, I already had my mind made up where... I was gonna try to make it happen. So a couple of days later, I hit up Maya and I said, hey, I wanna do a bourbon. So then once we started creating names, I was like, okay, what kind of name can we create that will be powerful that people would try the product based off the name? So we started rambling some names around and then I came up with Majesty. And when I came up with Majesty, it's a long story where when I, was, when I was younger, my parents would always say, hey, um, being a black male, you have to strive for greatness. Um, you have to have people respect you and different things of that nature. You have to be the best that you can be. So I was trying to think of names in that category, like, okay, what is greatness? How can I flip it? How can I do this? So finally, I was like, majesty. And when I looked at the meaning, majesty actually means greatness. It actually means um, royal power. It comes from a Latin word, um, maestas. My, my, I'm probably not saying it correctly, but it comes from a um, Latin word. So pretty much, um, it meant greatness. So I ran the idea by my and LaRue. I was like, hey, guys, um, what do you think about majesty? And they was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Um, we had some, some other names that I don't want to discuss because they were kind of corny. <laughs> but overall, majesty... Um, really stuck in and um, pretty much um, LaRue, um, he's actually the co-founder as well. So um, I said, hey, we need some dope graphics for Majesty. So pretty much um, I'm big on branding myself. So um, on our previous project, which is the beer, we have a maze print, which you can see on this can. So mm -hmm. I was like, hey, let's see what we can do as far as Majesty um, with the same print. So actually in the bottle of Majesty, we have the same print going around the top and around the, um, the label. We didn't want to make the label too flashy because we pretty much thought that if it was too flashy, it will appeal to one demographic more than the other. And we didn't really, we didn't really want a product that would necessarily appeal to one specific demographic. So we went to, through, you know, many different, pretty much labels and different things, but this is our final um, label. So. That's just a quick story of how Majesty came along. <laughs> so I met with Monier earlier, a couple weeks ago, and we talked about how you guys were in the beer business, switching over to the liquor business. Monier, can you tell me a little bit more about some of the previous projects you guys worked on and how that has helped you to prepare to jump into this whiskey industry? Absolutely. So first off, I want to thank you for allowing us to use your platform. Uh, we, we really appreciate this. So uh, basically, I met John and LaRue uh, a few years back 
Um, we was working on another project that uh, I was um, present. I was present of the company. It was uh, the company itself. I'm not going to name, but the product was called a uh, Nor King Kanye. And basically, when I jumped on board with that project, uh, it was just an idea on paper. Uh, so it took a long time to get it developed because, it's, of course, it's a, a, a product coming from France. But um, over the course of a few years, we was finally able to get it on the market. So um, I say about after four years, a long four years, we was able to finally get the product on the market, and we were doing very well. So during the course of me doing that, I learned the complete spirits background on how to pretty much run a company. I learned everything I needed to know uh, as far as um, as far as uh, what it takes to be a connoisseur and, and different sorts of things like that. And also I learned the business, uh, which is the most important part. Uh, I learned how to build relationships. I learned how to, you know, talk our way through situations when we, you know, we was, when we, uh, we backed up against the wall. I learned how to deal with, uh, I learned how to deal with doors being slammed in my face. You know, we learned how to deal with, you know, the good times and the bad times for the most part. And along that, that journey, I met John. Uh, John actually came on for us and worked up under me as my CEO. And that's how we met. Uh, and, you know, between me and him, we were basically the faces of the brand. We pretty much opened up whatever our distribution companies didn't do for us we pretty much did it ourselves uh and we built a good bond and on that same ticket on that same note me and john's first business meeting we had together uh, separate away from um the actual ceo at the time was with larue and uh so that's how we met him and larue is actually not from uh he's not representing us from the, the georgia side he's actually representing us from north carolina so he's our business partner, but he's based out of North Carolina. So he actually had flew up, uh, drove up to uh, to Atlanta and to meet up with us when we was doing a previous project. So uh, project did well for a while, and you know things happened. I'm not really about to discuss that, but what I'm on, what I will tell you is, me and John built a good relationship. And what happened was, once that project ended, me and him decided to move forward. You know, we was like, you know what, we already, we already got everything we need, the experience we need, so why not do our own, you know? So John jumped out, you know, and I followed him, and we came out with the beer, and the beer did very well. Uh, we was hitting a lot of locations, but it didn't do what we wanted to do, and that's because of uh, something we have no control over. But the beer is still in the market, so we're still moving forward with that. And like John said, at that point, we said, you know what? Like he said, let's do let's do a spirit, you know. Let's do let's do something different. Let's just get back into what we know, because the beer game is different. <laughs> we found that out real quick. So we was like, we know we know the we know the spirit game, you know. I've been in the spirits industry for five years, so so let's make it happen, you know. So I didn't think he was gonna do it at first, but then John shot out the gate, and uh, <laughs> next thing you know, we got a product in the store. So that's kind of how we met. Um, like I said, John is uh he's he's definitely the go-getter type and it's definitely in my blood too. And and LaRue has a lot of great ideas in his head. So between the three of us, we just come together and we click. Sorry, I forgot I unmuted I muted myself. That's great. So LaRue, like talk to us more about the marketing strategy around that. As you know in this industry, like Bourbon is bourbon, you know, whiskey is, there's, it's a competitive, there's a gazillion different whiskeys that come out each month, each year, and are crowding the shelves. What's your plan to really make Majesty stand out? What's your game plan and strategy around that? Well, uh, first of all, um, again, we definitely appreciate you letting us use your platform. And to, to keep it just as, as simple as possible, what we wanted to do, because we don't have a we don't have a large marketing firm or PR agency or anything like that. It's it's just three brothers just with you know ten toes down, just trying to work it out. So what we wanted to do is create a brand where the actual product is really the star, uh, and we feel like that just having a damn good bourbon really puts us in a in a great position to be able not only to to reach people that are aficionados and and are bourbonites, if if you will, 
but also bring some other people into the market that may not necessarily be bourbon drinkers. The only way you can do that is to have a product that, that people actually really enjoy and that people will talk about and, and people will share their experiences with. So that's actually our strategy to, you know, to put it in as many, as many glasses as possible, get people to taste it. They're going to fall in love with it. And then, you know, we, we do some supplemental marketing, you know, thereafter just to try to get, get us in, in other places as well, uh, you know, in different states and, and different avenues of, of, that, of that nature. Great. So let's dive into the details of this because I want to talk about what I'm smelling in this glass, what I'm tasting. Um, we all know that it costs a tremendous amount of capital to produce whiskey, especially as it's starting off. We all know it takes a while to age it. And so, you know, as brands develop, we know that they typically go to source whiskey in, um, in creating their product. Can we, do we, can we say anything about where the product comes from, what the plan, what the future is to create your own or anything around that? I'm, I'm, I'm going to let, I'm going to let John answer that one because he, he's, he has the, uh, he has the plan in, in his head. He's the architect behind that. So he has a lot of ideas in, in regards to us uh, expanding. So I'm, I'm going to let John go ahead and chime in on that. Um, so overall, um, we do have plans for expanding, but um, as you know, the industry is very competitive and um, being competitive, 90% um, of brands out are sourced. We chose the source route because we do not have a distillery. And like, I'm going to be completely honest with you. Like, I don't, like before this project, I wasn't really a bourbon drinker. You know, I'm going to be completely honest. But it was just like, I seen a, a loophole in the market where if we came out with a great tasting product and bring in product from Georgia to be competitive with the Tennessee products and the Kentucky products, then we can win because the bourbon industry is a multi-billion dollar industry per year just in Tennessee. So if we can just get 0.2% of that and give Tennessee some competition, then we win it. Like I could have easily um, went to Tennessee and sourced the product, but I'm a big hometown person. I like to support my city. I like to support my state. So I had to do a lot of research to find a distillery that produced bourbon and not alone, not alone find a um, facility that would actually do outside projects. A lot of facilities don't offer pretty much is contract distilling. That's the term for it, pretty much contract distilling. So a lot of facilities don't offer contract distilling. So I went to a bunch of different facilities, giving them my idea. And honestly, I felt as if they thought I would be competition towards them and they didn't do my project. So finally, I ran across my distiller that we have now. Um, I sat down with him. He was very eager to listen. And he was just like, hey, um, I normally don't do other people's projects, but um, tell me your ideas. How do you want it to taste? This and that. So once I broke it down to him, he was like, you know what? I'm going to give you a chance. So with this product, um, we definitely didn't want to come out the gate with an extremely aged product because I felt like that would set the bar too high for us out the gate. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to come out with a great tasting product. So I was debating between two years, three years or so on, a great tasting product. So once we put this particular product out, we can go to a more aged product. So that's the reason pretty much I chose to come out with a lower age product out the gate because I don't have my own distillery. No one, like if I came out the gate with a eight year old product, people would automatically know it's sourced because right. it's just like, how can you come out the gate with an eight year old product and you just been on the market for a month? So I just wanted, I'm a completely honest person and it's just like, Sourcing is the route that I honestly want to stick to. And then maybe in the future, um, possibly doing our own bottling. So I'm more into starting a bottling facility and bottling our own product and just getting the source product in versus, you know, doing a distillery and making my own product because there's a lot of great 
source product out, out there. You just really have to go through and find what works for you. Right. And the, and there's nothing wrong with, with sourcing whiskey. There's tons of brands that do. There's some tons of, tons of brands that are very successful in doing it. But I agree with you when you say that. It's all about just being honest with the consumer. Um, and supporting a local distillery here in Georgia is huge as well because there's, there's not that many of us that are on the market, any um, Georgia distilleries that are really out there getting nationwide um, uh, attention. So this is their opportunity to shine as well. So totally fine. Um, do we want to talk a little bit about, I know that, you know, you guys have, um, your, your mash bill is kind of proprietary, but do you want to give us any hints as to what we can expect with this or, you know, how long it takes, anything around that? Um, matter of fact, I would just give you the mash bill, uh, pretty much. Um, we are, of course, you know, a Georgia straight bourbon. Um, we are... We were aged um, 30 months in um, New American Oak, char three barrels. Um, pretty much um, the mash bill is 70% um, corn, 25% um, um, rye, and 5% um, malted bar barley. Um, I would say overall, it pretty much has a, um, a medium sweet nose with um, hints of vanilla, um, caramel, and um, rye spice. And I would say overall, it's like a medium finish. Um, to me, it's really smooth. And I guess you could say smooth is suggestive. So it really depends on the person. But um, overall, I would say it's a um, really smooth product. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to create a product where if you drink it neat, you will love it. If you drink it on the rocks, you will love it. And if you love it neat and on the rocks, you will definitely love it in a mixed drink. So that's my whole thought process like hey let's get a great tasting product that you can drink neat if you can take it neat then i'm quite sure that once you add some ice to it and water it down a little bit you'll we'll enjoy it once you put it in some lemonade or a manhattan or old-fashioned i mean you will love it so that's pretty much how my thought process operates well i have to say i think we picked the winner here um because again this is 80 proof and aged for two and a half years, like you said. I find the high corn um, to high rye combination very interesting. Um, so I am going to do my taste. I, I almost drank my first. <laughs> <laughs> I know how I can get sometimes. Sometimes it lasts, but most times it doesn't. So um, I'm going to pour a little bit more just so I can do an on-air tasting and, and give my uh, thoughts on this. But, um, you know, I started drinking this last week during our, our happy hour, um, and it was just phenomenal. It's delicious. Um, and, okay, so here we go. Let me, let me get in my zone. <laughs> Um, definitely, you know, for it to have a high corn, I didn't get a lot of corn notes on this, actually. I got more nutty notes, more pecan, and definitely that vanilla and caramel on the nose. Um, a little bit of sweet <coughs> jumping out of the glass, too. So um, this is very a fra this is very much a fragrant bourbon. It jumps out of the glass, just sitting here holding it. You can smell the aromas coming all through the house. Um, so, you know, to totally a winner just for smelling whiskey, right? Yeah. Um, when we talk about sensory and we talk about the experience of having bourbon, it all starts the moment you look at it in the bottle. So we talked about the design um, and the, you know, and the, the name aspect and the meaning behind it. So that's a check. But then also just being able to nose it and sniff this, like this should be in a candle. This is really good. It's <laughs> Um, so it does have that, you know, definitely some sweet corn, but I really love the pecan notes that are jumping out. The pecan and cherry notes that are popping out are really interesting. Um, I know a few of our bourbonites who are on the call just bought the bottle, so just nod your head or leave us a comment if I'm on cue with what you're smelling and tasting as you're drinking it. Shelby's got his bottle. I, before you guys joined on, Simone said she just bought two bottles. Um, so we do have members who have Majesty. So if you guys have it, drink along with me for a second. Um, 
I love the term that you use, smooth, right? Because that's a, that's a no-no word in BBS because it's so relative. And it's How about tranquil, tranquil, and mellow? <laughs> okay, tranquil and mellow could do. Um, <laughs> it is very smooth on the, on the palate, though. It's a clean, it's a, it's a clean mouthfeel on the front of the palate. Um, you know, you get flavor on the front of the palate, but then it washes through very easily on the back of the palate, and it has a slight white pepper um, note on the back, which is indicative of, you said there's 25% rye in here. So it's gonna have that spice that, um, that has so much rye. Um, but really, I think this is a combination in whiskey that I haven't really seen that much of. Typically, you're, we're around the 50s, 60s percents with the, um, with the corn, with maybe eight, five to eight percent rye in here. Um, so the 25 percent rye is really high to be added into a bourbon. Um, but it is a good balance because I think it does offset so much corn at that 75 percent that's in it. It's a good mix. Yeah, so definitely the corn, I, I get the corn, I get the malty flavor. There's a malt creaminess to this. Um, I, and again, with that hint of uh, white pepper, just on the back end, it doesn't burn, it doesn't sting. Um, and there is no hug. Um, it's just, it's just a, I think it's a delightful bourbon. I think you guys, for our first release, I think this is a knock out of the ballpark. So here's to you. Um, I want to open this up to questions from our members who are online with us. Um, let's, I know we're all muted, but ask your question, unmute yourself, ask your question, and then mute yourself right back so that we don't have a lot of feedback. Um, but do we have any questions from the Bourbonites who are participating tonight? Ephesian has a question. Let's go. Hey guys, congratulations. Um, so from, I guess, the conversation you had with the sorcerer to time on the shelf like what was the time gap or the timeline um the time gap i'm gonna be honest with y'all work extremely fast um pretty much the longest part was to get everything um the permits um from ttb federal to the state to the local to this to that to this then your background that was the longest part but overall, from meeting with um, our distiller to the shelf, it actually was about a month. And the only reason it took a month is because we wanted, we knew how we wanted the product to taste. And it's, I'm not going to settle until I get what I want. So pretty much that took the longest part, but it's pretty much trialing pretty much different blends. And I was like, no. Too sweet, I don't like it. No, 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 I like this, but I don't like this. Okay, let's go back and do this. So that was the longest part, but overall it took about a month. And then once it did hit the shelf, in another month we hopped into over 40 locations. So it's been a really fast process by us literally been on the market since February the 17th. And we're already in 40 plus locations already, so. And, and can I just add to that really quickly? The um, the distiller that we use, our, our distillery partner, he normally distills very high proof uh, blends. So when we were working to get our blend, it was something different from, for him as well, uh, because he, he doesn't have a, an 80 proof uh, blend in his lineup at all. They're all 95 and above. So this this was uh, even like say even though it's sourced, it is it is a I don't want to say a proprietary mixture per se, but it was something that we had to work on. We just didn't pick a barrel off the shelf and bottle it and, and you know, and sell it. It's definitely something that we worked on to try to find the best taste possible. And, uh, you know, we felt like that the, the finish that you're talking about, we felt that that type of finish would be best to, you know, bring new drinkers uh, in, into the bourbon market because, you know, somebody, somebody's not going to drink, uh, you know, something that's 100 112 proof and and be okay with it the first time out their palate's not mature enough so we felt like that we could you know secure some of the uh, some of the newbies if, if you will and to, you know to give them a, a you know a good offering you know right out of the gate that's great i think you um knocked it out of the ballpark i think this is a very easy 
uh, sip for our new beginner or beginning bourbon bourbon drinker. Ah, bourbon drinkers. You see, I've had quite a bit. <laughs> um, <laughs> Simone says in the comments, uh, she loves it so far. Definitely pecan nutty notes. And she had to go to three stores in Georgia before she got it, but she bought the last three bottles on the shelf. So um, can you tell us where is this located? I was looking through our Facebook Live comments and um, they're also wondering like in, in Virginia, can we get it in Virginia? Um, do they mail order to other states? Um, so let's talk about where um, we can have access to the bottles. Can we, okay. we can, go ahead, John. Okay, right now it's um, only in Georgia and I will give a listing of the, um, the Georgia locations, but we do have plans on um, expanding, hopefully um, by the summertime. It really depends on how this virus situation um, plays out, but we do plan on expanding to online where we'll be um, available in um, 22 to 26 states, hopefully um, by the um, summertime. And as right. far as Georgia locations, um, they're pretty much all around. I mean, we have um, Camp Creek. Um, we have a couple locations at Roswell, Locust Grove, Stockbridge, Eagles Landing, Decatur, Savannah, um, Hinesville, Georgia, Columbus, Smyrna, um, Holly Springs, Georgia, Kennesaw. So they're pretty much um, all spread out throughout the state so far, but you can always go to our website, um, drinkmajesty.com, um, to get the pretty much the um, latest locations. Okay. And one, thing, one thing that we do, one thing that we do is whenever we get new locations, we put them on our website, so that way people could know exactly where they could go find them, or we post them on our, our Facebook or our, our Instagram. So that way they know exactly where they could go to find a product. Cause I, I get that a lot. Where can I find it? Where can I find it? Just go check us out. Cause we're gonna, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that every time we get a new location, we put it on our website. So that way that is, if you sit on our website, you know you can get it there. It's not gonna be anywhere else yet, but we are expanding and we plan on being in every liquor store by the end of the, by the, end of the year. So that's our goal. Um, what's the price point on it? $29.99. Right. Our price point, I suggested, well, you know, uh, three tier states, you know, um, the actual liquor store gets to determine the price they want to set it at. I mean, want to uh, sell it at. But we got a suggested retail price, and our suggested retail price is $29.99. But uh, some liquor stores are selling it for like $32, you know, but it's right there in that range, right there in that $30 to $32 range. Uh, and the reason why we um, priced it at that price is because one thing that I noticed, uh, even myself, I have a bar and I have some EXO cognacs and stuff on it, uh, is when you got the, the expensive stuff, you tend to hold on to it. Like when your friends and stuff come over, you're not really pouring up, you know, you know the, 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 the bottles of your best stuff, just pouring up some, uh, some stuff that's good. So what we did was we put a good product out that tastes excellent, but it's not going to knock you over the head when you go to the store to pay for it. So some people are pretty much going in, they buy one bottle and they like it so much, they're buying two. And they're not afraid to share it, you know, because the price point is right. So what that does for us is that allows us to make more sales and allow our company to grow. Like I said, we are, a, you know, a small company and we, when we just getting out the gate. So the more sales we have, the better off we are. So to put a, a product in a market that costs you know, $60 or whatever. And, you know, somebody might possibly go and buy it and say, okay, yeah, look, I, I like this, but I'm not going to be sharing this with everybody. I'm going to hold on to it. So what happens is that product sits on their shelves and it collects dust and they bring it out every now and then and they sip it and they drink it and they enjoy it, but they do it for themselves. So we wanted something that people could socialize with, something that people would be willing to share with, with, with other people. So that way, like I said, our numbers jump and our brand grow. That's excellent. This is definitely something that is sippable and is cheap enough to bring to the family reunion. So, <laughs> um, so we got a lot. We got a lot of thumbs up on that. People love that the product is less than forty dollars a bottle. Smart strategy. Reggie says good pricing strategy keeps the return customers. 
So you guys hit that on the head as well. Um, are there any other questions from the Bourbon Eyes that are on uh, Whiskey Weekly with us? Trina? Um, as you decide, as you expand into other markets, I live in Chicago, what is your determinant for the order of the rollout into other markets? Um, that's funny because um, Monier is from Gary, Indiana. Mm -hmm. So it's like Gary, Indiana, Chicago, they're pretty much neighbors. So of course, we plan on going to Illinois along with um, Indiana. So pretty much um, I want to focus on trying to get at least three states south and then get towards two to three Midwest and so on. But like I said, um, Chicago and Indiana is on the radar. Uh, I already talked to a couple of distribution companies in um, both of the states and they're very interested that we just have to figure out as a company which situation um, is best for us. But like I mentioned earlier, um, no later than the summer we will be available online. So I can satisfy those customers in other states. And based on the online sales and the stats that come in weekly and so on for the locations, we will determine which state and we will put a ground presence in and getting distribution for that particular state as well as online. So we're big on stats. So it's like every week we wanna know how many accounts we have, how their accounts are doing. So that way we can support these accounts, make sure they're selling, make sure the customer is happy. So that way we can get these return customers and we can expand. But to answer your question, um, we do have a Midwest rollout um, coming real soon. Um, if I could have it my way, I would do it all tomorrow. We can do it tomorrow, but it, we just have to, to make it make sense. We don't wanna jump out prematurely right now. We really wanna focus on getting hundreds of accounts in Georgia, taking care of our home first. And once we take care of our home, we gotta take care of Monier's home, Indiana. We gotta take care of Chicago. We're definitely gonna take care of Florida because I see the comment as far as Florida. Because Florida pretty much, um, you don't need a distributor in Florida. So that is a really easy market to get into, but it takes a lot of marketing support. You really have to be on the ground to make sure that your products sell. And right now, since we're in Georgia and everything is going on, we just don't have the physical boots to put on the ground because it's just three of us trying to get a multi-million dollar company in the making. You see what I'm saying? So. Well, you can always lean on the Urban Heights. We've got some strong advocates in this group. Um, and if you get the product to them, they will get it. And they will buy it and they will love it. So just always remember that. And, you know, we can talk offline about how to really roll that out. But just get it to, just get it to the Urban Heights and you'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> um, any other questions? We got a couple more minutes uh, before we do final words, uh, but I definitely want to leave it open for more questions with, from the audience. I, I don't really have a question. I just want to say congratulations, guys. Um, <clears throat> I I drank it. I don't. I, I I think I'm on my like six or seven bottle. Um, I had bought a <laughs> I man, bought a couple man. bottles from 138 um, package store. Yes, I tell right so. Yeah, right right before this whole thing went down at a uh, party. For my wife's birthday, and um, I had like three bottles. I think two people left with with a whole bottle. Gave it to them. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it, I enjoy. It. I smoke cigars too, and it, it goes real good with a nice with a nice cigar. Um, that's probably the reason why I enjoy it so much. So I want to just say congratulations, you guys. You know, I, I share it on my Instagram a lot. You know, what I mean, I, I'm always promoting you guys because y'all doing good. So I just want to say congratulations. We appreciate Thank you, sir. that, brother. Thank you. We appreciate that. Okay, one last question before we, we close for the evening. Any other questions? Um, so how have sales been in Georgia? You know, Shelby's bought half a case, a case and a half. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, what are our sales looking like in Georgia? How can we support you and, and, and continue, continue to increase sales? Um, and what's the, bit? I'm, I'm asking you three questions, so take your time with this. But then what's the, the vision? What's the bigger plan for Majesty? Are, are there more releases coming out? 
Are there going to be longer age state beds? Um, just kind of tell us what the five-year plan looks like. Okay. Um, I know I asked a bunch, but... Okay. The sales are amazing in Georgia. And it's to the point where I had a talk with my distributor today, and I told him, like, hey, <laughs> I need to know when you guys are down to your last few cases so I can make sure that you guys have more cases. Like, spots are blowing out cases. 138, blowing them out. Order, water, 138 order four different orders within a month. Like, I mean, we're pretty much on our second large order um, within, like I said, a month and a half. Um, overall, we do have plans of bringing out um, additional products. <laughs> We actually talked about bringing out a um, another bourbon, but we're just really trying to figure out exactly um, what route that we want to go on um, that particular um, bourbon. Um, overall, we we have a vision of being a beverage company with several different brands under our umbrella. We already have the beer, we have a, the bourbon, we have several outsiders reaching out to us um, in regards mm -hmm. to partner with them. I have someone actually right now um, trying to partner with me to do a run. So um, we, may, we may do a run, we're just trying to figure out um, the details. So honestly, I wanna be the Coca-Cola of beverages, I mean, of alcoholic beverages. I want to have a wide portfolio of every single type of alcoholic beverage that we can do. Like, honestly, it can be, I don't care what it is. I definitely don't want to do vodka because it's oversaturated. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. Anything yeah. besides vodka and cognac, I'm all game for it. So, <laughs> overall, we just want to be successful. Um, what you guys can do, um, if you guys just keep continuing to support us um, like you have, that's all that matters because we are really appreciative of all the support that we've been getting so fast. It's really amazing. Um, I have people inboxing me, hey, I'm going to go buy a bottle. And then next thing you know, they're buying three bottles. And it's like, wow, like, I never would have thought that I would have had an alcoholic beverage that's on the market that people are actually buying. Because I always thought, hey, you have to be a millionaire to get a spirits brand. You have to do this to get a company. But once I sat down and researched and got all my logistics and paperwork down packed, I mean, it, it is a costly process, but overall, if you come up with a great strategy and different things of that nature, you will be successful. And I do want to thank my business partners, Manye and LaRue, because without them, it, it just would have been a dream. Like, I, I am a big dreamer, but it's always good to have people that partake on your vision. Because at the end of the day, it's like, if you don't support yourself, or if you, don't have, if you don't support yourself, you're your own biggest fan. But it's good to have people that support your vision and you guys can all come together to make one bigger vision. So the three of us, we have one vision to take over the world, to <laughs> at least get our three, our 0.3% of the billions of dollars that go into Tennessee. That's all I want. Can I get a half of 1%? Right. That's all I want. So if you guys continue to support us, we're definitely going to put George on the map. And if um, you guys need bottles or different things of that nature, um, definitely go to our website. Um, if we could ship bottles to people, we would, but it's illegal. So uh, <laughs> so definitely stay tuned. Um, that barbecue sauce. Know. Barbecue sauce, man. This barbecue sauce. <laughs> <laughs> No, the TTV actually follows you guys, so I wouldn't ship barbecue sauce or olive oil. <laughs> you might be able to get away with it, but y'all are under strict guidelines. Yeah. Yes. Uh, one thing I would like to say, um, 
to uh, add on to what John said uh, and, and to kind of answer the question you asked, when you said, what can you guys do? The biggest thing that anyone can do to show us support is just ask for our products when you go to your local store. When you go inside your local liquor store and or your local package store and um, ask for it. Just say, look, I want to try Majesty Bourbon. Do you guys, you all don't have it? What would it take for you guys to get it here? And just that conversation alone can open accounts for us and help us grow. And that's all it takes. Word of mouth is the, the biggest thing we got going right now. So as long as we have people that's, that's, that's speaking and asking for our brand, we can't lose. You know, so that, that's, my, that's what I would say. Just ask for us. Just When you go in your store and you don't see majesty, ask for it. Go, go up to the counter and, and, and ask the owner or the, the manager, and ask them, uh, have they ever heard of Majesty Bourbon? And if they say no, say, look, well, I would like to try it. What would it can you all order it? And if they ask, well, who is the distribution? Because they're going to ask who is distribution. Just tell them Artisan is the distribution company. And from that, they can find it. And that's how we grow. That's how, as a, as a unit, as a community, as a, as a group, that's how we grow. It's word of mouth. It takes us all to make this happen. Because with me, John, and LaRue, we can't do it on our own. So it takes, it takes everyone else to help us to get to that next, that next level. And once we get to that next level, John already mentioned, we want to do our own bottling. So, of course, if we do our own bottling, we're going to do it in our communities. We're going to be hiring people. That's jobs. Like, we want to get to the point where we're creating jobs and we're doing stuff, you know. We're out in the communities and we're doing different things, you know, to help, to help you know. This is not just about us becoming successful. This is about us helping other people become successful and grow, too, you know. So, however you come on. And we are a small company, but we eventually want to grow large. You know, we want to be, we want to be, like he said, the Coca-Colas and the Pepsis and, the, you know, the world, too. So, uh, it starts, it has to start somewhere, you know, and if you, it started with John with an idea, and now the idea is starting to grow, so the only way for us to, to get to that full potential is we're going to need help, you know, and we're not afraid to say that we're going to need help eventually, you know, we, we're going to need it, you know, so like I said, just ask for our product, if you ask for our product, we can't lose. Excellent. And uh, can, can I add on to that really, really quick? Go ahead. Uh, I, I do want to say that because, uh, you know, we started off the, the meeting, uh, you know, letting everybody know that we are black owned. And that's uh, and that's something that we're actually very, very proud of. I mean, and, and we take a, a really, uh, really deliberate approach to the way that we do business, especially within our own community. We are constantly looking for, uh, you know, opportunities to collaborate where appropriate uh, with other black businesses to help, uh, you know, to, to help one hand wash the other. I mean, we are community based. That's why we focus so hard on, uh, you know, on the black mecca in Atlanta, Georgia, to, in Atlanta, Georgia, to try to grow that particular market where there is where there is thriving business uh, and thriving business minds. Um, and, and like I said, we're very intentional and deliberate in doing business with, uh, you know, with our brothers and sisters who are who are doing legitimate business, too. Uh, so also add on to the answer of the question of, of what what you guys can do. Anybody that's purchased a bottle of majesty, uh, you know, help us on our uh, digital marketing with, uh, you know, taking pictures. Uh, I, I, know, I know Shelby uh, has, has, has filled us up with, with, with all kind of pictures and videos and things like that. I mean, we definitely appreciate that. Uh, you know, take pictures of, of yourself with the bottles. Uh, leave reviews on our Facebook page. Uh, invite other people on your Facebook profile to, to like our page and, and, and let them in on the, uh, on the goodness of majesty too. Uh, if you leave a review on the majesty Facebook page, you get a majesty bourbon t-shirt. Uh, a few of y'all probably have those that have, that have purchased or, or that have, uh, you know, left a review already. I mean, you will get one of those as well. I mean, we, we definitely appreciate that. Uh, and just keep that, keep that ball rolling and, you know, keep talking about us. But definitely, you know, from a digital marketing standpoint, you know, share your experience. That is, that is absolutely important because people read those things and, and people actually put stock in what consumers say. Because we can say it's great all day. You know, we, we, we love it. We know it's great. But if you say it's great and if you love it and you share it, that, that carries so much more weight. And, uh, and we definitely, you know, appreciate everybody that has supported us thus far, everybody that is engaging with us. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, re it's really humbling to be able to, to even sit and, and to talk about it, like John said. And, and like I said, we, we don't take any of it for granted. And we're going to continue to support our community. And as, and as we grow, we're definitely going to be pulling as many people possible 
uh, in whatever field of endeavors that, that you have that, that could be mutually beneficial. Because like I said, we're deliberate with that. We're intentional with that. Uh, and, and we feel that that's our responsibility and we don't shy away from that. So whatever, whatever we're going to be needing to help us grow, if, if you are in that line of business, you're going to have opportunity to work with us because those, those are the type of people that we're looking to work with. All right. Um, we've got a couple suggestions and questions and comments that I want to read. Melissa West asks, have you partnered with any cigar bars in the area? Once COVID-19 clears, of course, that might be the move. Also, have you looked into mail order or subscription box collaborations like Flaviar? Oh, Flaviar, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we got a lot of things. We got a lot of things working. Uh, un, unfortunately, this, this COVID-19 thing is kind of, it stopped a lot of momentum that, that we had. And we just literally just had to put some things on pause. But, but, uh, but trust me, we have tons of things that are going to increase our visibility. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of opportunity for people to get, uh, you know, community-based things for people to get involved and to have a good time and to, and, and, and to, get, to get people talking about the brand again. So it's, it's definitely going to be, be a process, but we're, we're working on it and, and we have a plan and we're ready. Excellent. Um, Sire says, make it sure everyone at the strip, the strip club. club. <laughs> <laughs> Sire is one of our members down in Florida. It's the first time. Oh, yeah. I've they're they're going to have the bottles. Trust me. Like, they're right. going to have them. Excellent. Hey, um, yeah, Sire for the win on that one. Um, I think we're almost out of time. So if there aren't any other questions, let me check Facebook really quickly. I don't see any questions rolling through there. Um, you know, I just want to say that you guys are dope. I think that what you're doing is amazing. You guys jumped right out into this industry. Like, who cares? We don't have millions of dollars, but we have a passion. We have a dream. We have a goal. Let's just make it happen. I think that story in itself is very inspiring. So I'm already very impressed with you all. The whiskey backs it up. It's great. It's got a good flavor on it. It's got, um, it's great on the nose. It's great on the palate. Very sweet, but elegant and smooth. Although we talk about that word a lot. Um, but it is, I won't say tranquil. Like I will put tranquil <laughs> whiskeys but I think this one is definitely delightful um, in, in its approach and it is easy sipping and the price is right um, so you guys really put a lot of thought into this definitely checked off a lot of boxes um, as far as price point packaging um, the easeability especially with the proof and um, flavors so kudos to you guys I'm really really impressed with the work that you guys have done and of course, your friends here at Black Bourbon Society and all of our bourbonites are on board to support you guys as you grow beyond Georgia um, and take over the world. So um, on that note, I want to wrap it up and say thank you all so much for being a part of Whiskey Weekly. And um, let's do a final shout as to where people can find out about you through your website, Instagram, Twitter, list all of that um, real quick, and then we'll go ahead and we'll wrap. The, uh, the website is drinkmajesty.com. Uh, you can find us on Facebook uh, at Majesty Bourbon. The Instagram page is, uh, is Majesty Bourbon as well. Um, and you can also, uh, you know, contact us through our website as, as well if you don't have any of those, uh, any of those social media platforms. Okay. Any final last words, John or Monier? Uh, other than me saying thank you once again for allowing us to use your platform, uh, you know what I'm saying? That, that was, I really appreciate it. Um, like I said, I had the opportunity to meet you. You're a great spirit. You know, we had great talk, you know, so... I really appreciate all this, and uh, I'm just looking forward to the future, you know? Right, right. We had a six-foot distance apart meeting. <laughs> I could, hey, I couldn't even shake her hand. I wanted to, but I couldn't. No handshaking, no hugs, and I'm a huge hugger, which is really uncomfortable. So, you know, it's, it's very hard for me during this social distancing moment, um, but... Yep, I at least got to lay eyeballs on you and I read your energy from six feet away and you guys are very genuine and, and very sincere in what you're doing. Um, and I'm really, you know, really glad to help you guys. Um, Thank you. 
So thank you. And on that note, this is Black Bourbon Society. Become a member of Black Bourbon Society to support programming like this. Um, you can connect with us on blackbourbonsociety.com. Also follow us on YouTube and on our Instagram at Black Bourbon Society. And thank you so much for being a part of Whiskey Weekly. All right. Thank you so much. Bye. Cheers, guys.